So I'm going to use another program which I really like called iStudio Publisher. And um, it's real easy to use. I'm going to push Command Plus to make the picture here larger. Now this is what I did in Pixelmator. I've made the opacity less so I could put figures over it. This computer screen is what I'm going to work on right now, and I'm going to take a square. You push the square in the shape library, form a square, about the same size as the computer monitor. Now you can see it's um, snapping is on, which I don't really like to use. I have to always turn it off. It's up here. I turn off here and here. Now you have to rotate this a little. Here, this is the rotate tool here. Grab one of the yellow edges. And there you go. You rotate. Go back to the selection tool. And let's get the shape a little more narrow. There we go. Now it's starting to look like the monitor underneath. Uh, what I'm going to do now is hit the um, reshaping tool. I could grab any of these orange edges and reshape the square now. This is a really easy program to use. I think one of the only drawbacks I could think of is um, it doesn't have layers but you can send things forward and backwards in the order right here now the color of this I'd like to fill with a gradient color and we're gonna pick the color here move this so you can see it cool That's nice. And you can move your slider and your Mac color to make it uh, darker or not. There's two colors here. We'll try making this one darker. There we go. That is pretty. I turned down the opacity. A lot of this is trial and error. Trying to find, there it is. I'm trying to get that nice little shape in there. Very nice. And when I'm done here, I usually hit the selection tool. This is one of those programs where you could save, which is kind of nice. It doesn't save on its own, but that means if the cat walks across your keyboard, you won't accidentally save something you don't want. So before I close out or move or after any major step, I'll push Command S to save. Now, what I'd like to do is copy this woohoo, which I did in Pixelator. Um, it's done in pixels. Uh, I'd like to do this by just printing the words, but I want to have a little curve here and um, comical sense to the. Uh, 
almost handwritten uh, look to the letters. So what you do is you click the bezier curve here and make a slightly curvy line. Double click to end and select text along path tool. That's right here. Click on your line. And now using with the cap lock, I'm going to type woo dash who. Now you can see the words are much smaller. So double click woo who till it's all selected. It'll be purple and go to the character uh, pane and here you have size. I like to use the slider there you go now select the select tool again and you can move it to where you want We're not going to get much better than that. And if you temporarily delete the bottom layer, you can see how the woohoo will look. Very nice. Another thing you may want to do is select the line and go to the line pane. And here, see this checkbox that says line? Uncheck it. Now it's invisible. You could see it here um, only because you have um, you're in edit mode if you go to preview mode that line disappears so that's how the printout will be very nice I almost forgot to show you how to get the comical look to the um, word woohoo go to the text tool double click on the words and then go to the character pane and you could change Helvetica um, I what I like to use a lot is Comic Sans and like to name it as a comical look there you go and you could uh, make it a little smaller like so And you could make it bold just to add a little more oomph to the look. You might want to add an exclamation mark at the end here. There we go. One more quick thing I'd like to show. Uh, I wanted to make a replica of another cool Mac app review that was on the original uh, done in Pixelmator, which I really do love. Uh, great program also. I went to text box tool, made a text box, automatically goes to text tool, type in what you need. Select it, check that it's um, Helvetica, which was the default, uh, probably in Pixelmator. Uh, increase the size. I'm doing this real quick. We'll make this a capital A like the other. And what I came up with was this. You can see it matches pretty well. I also made it um, bold. So the font is Helvetica bold. Unbold, it doesn't quite have that shouting effect. I'm on the multi line tool now, and I want that's the icon right here. And I want to show you the distinction between the straight line and the straight curve. That's number one and number five. Straight line.
double click to close. Now we're going back to the multi-line tool. And now we'll pick number five, the straight curve. They look pretty much identical. The distinction is when you go to the reshaping tool. When you push on the straight line, it's what it is. It's a um, succession of straight lines and uh, you're still going to have angled corners no matter what you uh, do. When you go to the straight curve you see these bezier handles which are really awesome. You could um, make curves as opposed to straight corners. So you have a lot of control there. And uh, the way I discovered this was I um, emailed support, which is very good, and they told me what the distinction was between the two lines. Now this shape here, this was a, what was it, a square originally. And what I did was, again, I used the reshape tool and you could see it, you could really do damage here. I'm going to undo that. And Whoops. And the two lines in the X are simply lines that I drew using this tool here. This is like a bezier tool. It's called the multi-line tool. I did that because I wanted to make one, two, three points. Now you double click so I could have a little curve. Then you go to the reshape tool and you could curve this to your heart's delight. Uh, then you go to um, line, change the color to white. And the point size you could change to 2, make it a little thicker if you want. And there you see. I'm going to put this back where it was. Blow it up a little so I could see what I'm working on. You have handles on the bezier tool, so you could straighten the line out. Really awesome program. I want to show you one other thing. Here's uh, something I started when I first found this program and I was exercising and I was just trying to get a handle on it. This pipe here is a shape, this shape right here, like so. You could flip it. There we go, now it's matching the uh, pipe that's colored in. Hit the reshape tool. take snap off.
use the bezier handles shape the pipe and this opening here is a series of circles I use rotate them reshape it a little copy it and paste and make one a little smaller move it over You could use the arrow keys also. We're going to go to fill. Solid color. Push this box here. Choose black. And there you have it. The pipe could also be colored. Now, a shortcut to getting the same color is to push the magnifying glass and your color wheel choose this color here and there you go isn't that nice I want to show you what I did here was I took two pipes and I grouped them together so they stay together these are two separate pipes I group them up here. Ungroup. See, they still move together because they're both selected. Click any place on the interface window here, the white, and now you could separate them. And this was simply a um, white oval, and I turned off the line so it's invisible. Now if you push go back, it's magical the way uh, iStudio puts everything back in order. I really enjoy that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my Mac app review on iStudio Publisher, a really amazing program. So despite a couple drawbacks, it only exports in PDF and has no layers. I give this program four stars. Very easy to use, great tech support, fun tools. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.